Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at using paragraph borders and backgrounds in Pages. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now Pages 13.2 adds new functionality in the Paragraph Borders section. Here's what it used to look like before and now you can see it's been upgraded. There are more options. So let's take a closer look at this section of the Format Sidebar and also some examples of how to use it. So here I've got some sample text and I'm going to place the cursor inside the second paragraph here. You don't have to select the entire paragraph because anytime you change something in the paragraph settings it affects the whole paragraph for what you have selected or what the cursor is currently in. So I'm on the Format Sidebar here and if I switch to the Layout Settings I can see here Paragraph Borders and the Paragraph Background Color. So basically to use this first thing you need to do is set a line type. So you have a full set of line types now with the new update. So I'm going to choose the regular rounded line here so the edges will be rounded. And you can see what it will do by default is add a line above the paragraph. And you could see four little switches here showing me above, below, to the left, and to the right. So by switching one or more of these on or off I can determine which of the sides have a border. I can switch all of them off if I want to. Also to the right I've got a button that quickly selects all four of those. So it's a quick way to get borders completely around the paragraph. Now I could also change the border type. So let's go to some dots there. Let's go to some rounded dots. We can do dashes and then you could change the size and you can also change the color using either one of these color chips or the full color picker here with the color wheel or any other way that you want to choose colors. So you can fully customize that. You can also change the border offset. So how much space there is between the border and the text inside the paragraph. By default it will start off at 6. And you can also choose rounded corners. It's easiest to see that if we use one of the solid borders there. There's rounded corners and if I turn it off you can see they're squared off. With this type of line you're going to get a tiny bit of rounding on the corners because that's the type of line it is. But with this line you're going to get sharp corners. Then in addition to that you've got Paragraph Background here. So if I select this I can choose a color for the Paragraph Background and I can also click here to use the Color Picker. Now all of this works in conjunction with other settings. So if I look above here I've got indents. If I simply change the first or the left side it won't seem to change very much because you still have either the first line or all the other lines at zero. But if I change them both you can see how it brings the left border all the way in. And I only have one setting for the right. So I can make it look a little bit better by taking away some to the left and some to the right here. I can also switch back to Style here and then I've got Spacing Before and After Paragraphs. I can increase that to create a little spacing there and I get something like this. Note that this only works with borders. So if I were to turn off all of the borders here you could see how that spacing actually includes the background. So you want to have a border on in order to make sure that things will look like you want them to. I'll show you some examples to go into more detail in a bit. Now one thing to remember is paragraph settings can be saved in a paragraph style. So if you get something you like like this here so then up here in Styles you can click the little down arrow there, click the plus button and add a style. I'll just call this Special like that. And now if you have another paragraph later on like that I can change the style to Special and you can see how it uses that. And in Styles of course you can change them all by simply updating one. So I'll change the color here like that of the border. And then you can see here this is now Special with an asterisk saying it's using the Special style but it's been modified. If I click Update it updates the style and thus updates the use of that style throughout your entire document. So you could set something like this up and use it 87 times throughout your entire book and then make one change to one, update it and all 87 instances of that paragraph will change. 
One other useful thing you should know here, and that's how this works when you have multiple paragraphs in a row that use the same style. So here, if I put another line, you can see how it combines it and just has one set of borders and one consistent background, even though there are two paragraphs or three paragraphs like that. But if I were to change this one here and say, turn off the right side border, you can see now it's separate. It doesn't link up because they have different settings. You can change it back and they have the same settings now so they link up with one consistent border and background. Now let's look at a whole bunch of examples on how you can use this. So in this example here, I've got this single paragraph and all I've done is added a border to all the sides, made the border one point, and stuck with the default six point border offset. Under style, I've added eight points before and after the paragraph. And I've also, under layout, set the first and left to one inch and the right to one inch so it's indented on both sides. This is a simple way to have some text stand out without making it too flashy with colors and everything. In this next example, I've used a brush border, this one here, and a color for the border so it stands out a little bit better. And I only have it going half an inch on either side. Here, I've got just top and bottom, and I've set it to a two point regular line here with only a four point border offset. And I've set this up so that it's got italic text that's centered. So it's a nice way to pull some information, sometimes called a pull quote, uh, out of the document here. I stuck with the left and right being at zero, and that works fine. Notice if I add a left side there, it really pushes out beyond the margin. But if you don't have a left or right side, the line kind of stays exactly within the margins and it looks better. Here's another one where I've created kind of a window shade effect. Here I've got just a line at the top. It's a thick four point line and I'm using the rounded line here at the top. So I kind of got the rounded ends right here. And then I've set a paragraph background, just a gray background here. But I don't like how Pages particularly does this because notice if I go to style here and I have before and after paragraph set to 12 points, but there's definitely not 12 points here. That's because without the border on the bottom, it just adds that to the white space below the paragraph rather than inside the paragraph. Here's a really simple effect. I just put a border to the left. I made it red so it stands out and relatively thick. And this way I get this line that comes out on the edge. It kind of looks like an annotation or editing line, but instead of being part of the editing tools. It's a permanent part of the document so it will print and export like this. So here's an effect that I like which uses a paragraph border and a paragraph background that are exactly the same color. So by doing that you can really control the amount of space around the text. I've set the border offset to be 6 pixels so you can see that it creates a nice border around it where the text sits in the middle of this color here. I've got six points here which means that the line, since it's the rounded line there, really it's got a nice curve to the end there. I could also do rounded borders like that for more of a curve. And of course I could use any color I want as long as I match the two colors. It's got a quarter inch to the left and right there and the style's got eight points above or below so it's set apart from the text before and after really nicely. An alternative to that is being able to use a black background. So basically reversing text. So I'm doing the same thing here. I've just got a regular border. I've turned on rounded corners here. I've set the offset to 10 points so the text sits nicely in the middle. But I have the text as white text here. The text color set to white. And with the border and background to black, it's kind of inverted text. It's so it's an inverted part of the document. And here's another variation kind of on that. And the idea is to have a background that's a specific color. When I'm using the square dots here at two point black, it looks kind of reminiscent of, you know, something that you might cut out from something like that. So it draws attention to it. And here's one where it uses just left and right borders. I've got one inch indents on both sides. And I've got a nice brush border here. And you can see how the brush goes in opposite directions along the side there. I've also set it to a dark gray here. So it kind of creates this interesting effect. And here's one that's very different than the others because there's nothing there. I've actually set up a paragraph that has no content in it. And I've created a border at the top 
six point gray there with a nice brush and I just use the regular border offset. I under style set the before paragraph to be 18 points. So pushing this down a lot. I don't need to push the bottom down a lot because there's actually the blank line there. So this is a way to actually have a ruler in between paragraphs without actually having another element. And here's another variation on that. You could see in this one I've got a thin just a quarter point red line here. And so it's just a really thin line and I've set it up so that it's got eight points before and after and I've set the text in that line to be only one point. So tiny text but that's okay because I'm not actually putting any text there. It's just a blank line. Here's another one that only uses one line. It's kind of like a window shade but in this one here I just have it on the left and then I've got a background color and on this one I've got it just on the right and I've got a background color but I've also justified the text to the right. So it's kind of a way to have bits of information pulled out and then maybe use it once to the left, once to the right throughout your document to create some variety. Here's a variation on that where up here I've set it to a gray border and a gray background to match with rounded corners and black text but here a blue border and blue background, rounded corners and white text. And you can see kind of what I'm simulating here kind of looks a little bit like the Messages app getting text messages back and forth. So maybe if you need to represent for some reason text messages back and forth inside of a document this is a really simple way to do this. Set a style for the left side, set a style for the right side and use them as you need. So those are just some examples to get you going. I'm sure you can experiment and find all sorts of other uses for this. Note that of course you can do all of this using text boxes as well but that creates extra elements that you have to position that you have to set up so that they follow along with the text if you add more before and after. Text boxes and shapes are more versatile certainly. Using paragraphs with borders and backgrounds like this is a little simpler and sometimes easier to implement especially if you've got a large document to create and don't want to mess around with creating all sorts of other elements throughout it. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.